Keep it going for Stephen Haskins. Come on up, Steve. Good. Um, so you know that pit in your stomach feeling like you know something bad's about to happen? I had that. Now, granted, I was being fingerprinted at the time. But I didn't know if that was like a normal response or not. I had never, I didn't know. As far as I knew, my record was clean. I mean, I had never really been caught at anything. But I couldn't shake the feeling. It was like, you know, like when you're in the TSA line and you're 93 to 96% sure there's nothing in your bag, but you're not, you're not 100% sure. That was, and I'm like, and it hits me, fuck, there was an issue, an incident. Uh, 10 years ago, yep, I didn't get arrested though, I did get detained, but I wasn't arrested, okay? And I knew that if these guys found out, it was gonna be a big problem. So the incident, all right. Um, I was commuting with my girlfriend who I had lived with and worked with. I don't recommend that, just as a side note. <laughs> That's a story for a different night, trust me, but we're gonna skip past that. So we're commuting together. First of all, let me explain. So my girlfriend is Heather. Redhead, brown eyes, could pass for like a 50s pinup model. She loved attention, okay? And she got a lot of it. Didn't matter, men, women, young, old, a lot of attention. Now, my issue was I needed to understand and figure out how to separate the harmless attention from the other kind. And, and that was kind of the deal. I knew the deal. So we're commuting. Um, we would drive to Daly City. We'd take the BART over to 12th Street, Oakland, every day. So we're parked. We're walking into the station. I see this guy off to the side, this creeper guy. I don't know why, I, I can't tell you why, but it kind of raised my awareness. We walk by him and he just glares at Heather. And I'm like, yep, super creeper, I knew it. <laughs> we go into the station and uh, I motioned to Heather to get on the escalator to get you know, in front because I wasn't raised by wolves. I mean, that's what you, you do as a gentleman, you let the woman go ahead of you on the escalator in case she falls, you're there. My grandmother taught me that. I don't know. So I'm like, she gets on, and um, we're, we're heading up to the platform. And, I, and there's a big glass window adjacent to the escalator, and I look out into the parking lot, no creeper man. I'm like, okay, that's cool. We're almost at the top, and I look down, and the reason why is because creeper man is now pressed up against the glass, glaring at Heather, and he's got his little tallywhacker out, you know, and he's trying to get her attention. Luckily, she doesn't see this. Of course, I see him, but he doesn't see me seeing him, and I'm pissed. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to startle him. So I just, I kind of wrapped the window, and it startled him because, <laughs> yeah, this 10-foot window came raining down upon him and his little, his little guy. And a lot of things happened in a really quick amount of time. <laughs> His eyes got this big. My eyes got that big. Heather spun around, and she's just like, what happened? And I'm just like, uh. And I point at the window. I can't even talk. And now we're at the top of the platform, and, and our train comes immediately. I'm like, get on. <laughs> so we get on, and, and, and she's like, what the hell happened back there? And I'm like... I, I, I think I just Lorena bobbited some creeper dude. I'm not sure. And so we get to 12th Street. There's no agent at Bart. I'm like, ugh. So we, we walk to our work, and I call up Bart, and I'm like, hey, I might know something about that broken window. And they said, well, you have two choices. You can either immediately come back to Daly City, or we will come arrest you. And they said, and bring your girlfriend with you. And I'm like, okay. So we go back. They don't buy my story at all. They, they separate us, interrogate us separately, and they try to concoct this story that 
that I was mad at Heather and I punched the window out of anger. After about 30 minutes of this silliness, I was like, look, um, that window was not earthquake proof. You're lucky someone hasn't sued you over that window. All right. Now, I'm not an architect. Where's our architect? I'm not an architect. But it sounded good at the time, and they were like, okay, we're going to release you. Um, <laughs> and, um, and, but they said, but you better watch out for a bill for that window, because we're going to bill you. So, um, so remember at the beginning of the story, the beginning of the story, I was telling you I was being fingerprinted. Well, I was being fingerprinted, not because I was arrested, but because it was like the last grueling step of this employment job offer that I had. And it was for a background check. Well, afterwards, um, and I remembered all this while this was happening. So uh, after the fingerprinting, a couple days later, um, I get an email. And the email said, congratulations, you passed the background check. Um, and the employer was Bart. <laughs> Oh, oh, <laughs> and I, I never got a bill for the window. <laughs> <laughs>